Hey guys, Creative the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. And I was just looking at Jupiter through my telescope right now. The sky is, well, not bad, not perfectly beautiful, but not bad. There is the summer triangle up there. This is a perfect time to be capturing some more frames on the Veil Nebula or whatever nebula I want to image. Maybe we could try for the uh, M33 uh, galaxy. It's finally getting to the season. So much to do, so much to do, except that the moon is shining and the moon is almost full and we deep sky astrophotographers we hate the moon <laughs> well we don't hate it but it hurts our eyes precious um, it's a bit painful because if you're new to astrophotography or you haven't really done deep sky astrophotography where you're trying to get like you know images of nebulae of galaxies that kind of stuff the moon is a big obstacle because it provides as much light pollution as a big city like Tokyo. It makes things much more difficult to image. And there are some workarounds to that, especially just like imaging far away from the moon. And so today I want to go into some things that you could be doing, some activities for you for this particular moon cycle uh, with our full moon. So what can you do for the full moon? A few tips and tricks. We'll have a couple this month and then we'll have, you know, uh, few more next month and if we still have ideas you know I'll be presenting them every month so you guys have something to do during this difficult period of the month where you have to live through and survive uh, through sheer willpower and courage a full moon so let's get to it so tip number one well you can put uh, take up planetary imaging so if you have a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope like this amazing Celestron C9.25 uh, telescope. Well, you can point it to the moon, our enemy. You can point it to Jupiter. You can point it to Saturn and you can observe them, obviously, but you can also image them. And there's lots of like planetary imaging is awesome in that it's very easy to get a first image that will just blow your blow you away for your first result. And it's like, you know, learning a new language. You, you get the hang of it, you get the few simple sentences and then bah, you hit a wall because things suddenly get complicated. And it's exactly the thing with planetary imaging. And a period of full moon is the perfect time to start up planetary imaging. So I've actually started up on planetary imaging myself um, a couple of months ago, really. I've done a bit in the past and I'm doing still a bit from time to time using this uh, particular uh, Schmidt Cassegrain. And I have a video on that if you guys are interested and you want to spend a bit of your full moon time uh, doing planetary imaging. Now, large aperture, high focal length telescope like this one, um, the Schmidt Cassegrain are ideal for planetary imaging. And you'll have to pick up a few skills to be able to do that. You'll have to do perfect collimation of your um, uh, telescope. And uh, this one is my favorite for uh, astronomy in terms of Schmidt Cassegrain because it's the C9.25. And it so happens that its mirror, its main mirror, is less curved than other main mirrors of typical Schmidt Cassegrains. And uh, that means it's easier to man manufacture. And apparently, it, it, the, the, because of that, the mirror is typically higher quality. I've told it's true. I've been told it's true. I've also been told it's an urban legend, but I can say for sure that that this Schmidt Cassegrain, the C9.25 MyPerterly sample is amazing and it beats everything else I've owned, including the um, uh, Celestron Edge HD800, which is a smaller telescope than this one. Uh, you can also do planetary imaging with a refractor, with a Maxutov Cassegrain, with uh, you know any telescope you have lying around, especially if it's the moon, any telescope will do, even a camera lens will do. You, can, you just want to take a video of the object and then stack the frames. It's very quick, very easy. You can do it in 30 minutes and get excellent results. So this is one way to pass the time when the full moon is upon us, casting its curse upon you. Suggestion number two, you could be imaging uh, globular clusters or, you know, open clusters of stars and globular, globular, you get my meaning, globular clusters are excellent because they're stars and stars are some of the brightest point light sources that you can find. And they're extremely 
well, they're not actually. They're, they're really not affected much by light pollution, which means it's a kind of like favorite type of target for me in Tokyo. And also the, um, the full moon doesn't really bother when um, imaging globular clusters. And it so happens that right now we have the Hercules uh, globular cluster in the northern hemisphere that is visible. It's a perfect target for this full moon. So um, go ahead. Point your scope to it, whether it's a color camera, OSC, uh, one-shot color camera, or you're using monochrome with LRGB filters, you'll likely get a great result. Now, some tips and tricks for globular clusters, even more than other targets, you really want to get your focus pinpoint precise. And that can be like surprisingly difficult, um, even with a Batinov mask, uh, which is a, an excellent focusing aid, because even the Batinov mask might not be sensitive enough when you have poor seeing conditions. And globular clusters are one of those things that just like planetary imaging benefit from good seeing. But still, even with poor seeing and with like approximate focus, you can get amazing images. Globular clusters work best at high focal length, uh, but you can do it with small refractors as well. Uh, the Her Hercules globular cluster is a great example that will work at pretty much any focal length. So why not? And you know, all other bright targets like that, globular clusters, that kind of stuff, that are far away in terms of like angular arc distance to the moon, that for me is back there. Well, you can use them and you know just target them and do broadband imaging on them. Um, you'll want to make sure that if you're getting the closer you're getting to the moon, the more um, likely you'll have like light entering your tube and reflecting inside the, the tube. You want to avoid that. So you might want to use a dew shield, that kind of stuff to avoid uh, light reflections, reflections coming in. But that is a second thing that you can do uh, this month for this particular full moon. And of course, there are others. Suggestion number three for this uh, full moon cycle. So this is actually uh, something that is really something I recommend doing during the full moon when you cannot image a lot of targets. Um, and it is to do uh, tuning of your equipment because you have stars that are available and you're not feeling like you're losing imaging time by doing those tests. So if you're planning on using a new piece of software like Nina, uh, you know, you're, you come from Sequence Gen Generator Pro and you're getting annoyed at how slow it is to go from frame to frame, or you're using APT uh, and you're annoyed that there is no good autofocus and you want a solution that will work better than that, well, the full moon is the perfect time to be trying new software on new pieces of equipment without feeling frustrated that something is going wrong. And I have several tips and tricks on how to do that, especially if you're going to Nina. So I'll be linking above to a playlist of uh, my Nina tutorials. Nina is a free and open source capture software that is slowly go getting better and better. It's not meant to replace Sequence Generator Pro, but it surely has for me. Um, I am also very biased because I've been a contributor to Nina, especially contributing um, a lot of the current autofocus code that's in there. So uh, I might not be completely objective on that. Um, so that's one example of thing you can do. Something I, I recommend as well is if you've had trouble with something that's called plate solving and auto centering, which is basically you take a picture of some stars somewhere. Now let's say you try to slew to a target. Let's say you try to slew to the Veil Nebula. You're in a very light polluted city like me. So it's very difficult to visually know whether you are properly looking at the Veil Nebula. Well, plate solving will be looking where you, you slewed. It will be analyzing the stars in there, comparing them to a database of stars, figuring out where you are actually pointed and tell the mount to actually slew back to, uh, to the actual target. So that's like plate solving and auto centering. And it is awesome. It's great to be lazy. I love being lazy, as you know, and plate solving and auto centering is critical to being lazy. So you may want to try that out if you have a go to mount that is equatorial, um, like my AZ EQ5 here or the AZ GTI, which is um, an actual alt azimuth mount, not equatorial, but you can mount it in equatorial mode and makes a very cheap entry level, light and portable astrophotography rig. I highly recommend it. 
it won't give you like you don't expect to do very high focal length with that you'll have to stay very wide field but it's a great uh, starting point so with that you could be trying um, plate solving and auto centering uh, i'm leaving a video uh, on top about the az gti and how to set it up in equatorial mode if you are interested um, other suggestion in terms of tuning is auto guiding like you know fixing up problems with auto guiding you have stars available you can try auto guiding you can recalibrate your auto guiding you can do drift alignment using uh, phd2 which is a way of checking your polar alignments um, you can test like if you have a declination axis that has a lot of backlash meaning it, it takes a long time for it to reverse direction so it went one direction then you can see you're going a bit too far from target and you want to pull it back to where it was and it takes a long time to react that's backlash and one way to counter backlash is actually to intentionally get a poor polar alignment to force the declination axis corrections to be always in one direction so why not take advantage of this uh, season if you have if this full moon if you have a lot of backlash try offsetting your polar alignment by maybe like a couple of arc minutes maybe 10 arc minutes and you know see how that you know makes you uh, work in terms of guiding then you, you'll see that your guiding will always be pushing deck declination in one direction and you can set that direction as the only direction that you want to send guide pulses in and it can work shockingly well with low grade or very budget mounts so you know why not try that guiding in general the phd2 guiding assistant it's a great time to be doing that uh, tuning of your mount tuning of backlash all that kind of stuff it's great for this full moon time so take advantage of that and we'll have the last tip for today about what you could do during uh, this uh, particular full moon and it is not quite astrophotography but it is quite important because we astrophotographers tend to spend a lot of time on, in our backyard traveling to dark sites or on our balcony like me and we tend not to um, you know pay, pay attention enough to our loved ones and so yes this full moon take advantage of the full moon to do to cut back a bit on astrophotography and you know spend more time quality time with your loved ones and hug them no i meant your other loved ones <sighs> And with that, that's it for my tips for today. There's tons of other tips that, that will be coming next month. So you'll still have stuff to do for next month. Uh, don't worry, I'll keep you occupied during those full moon uh, periods. Uh, but with that, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to this channel, this has been a little silly video that's, you know, just a series of little ideas of what you can do during this full moon. But, you know, I often do tutorials, tips and tricks, imaging nights, uh, traveling to Tokyo Tower to do imaging under Tokyo Towers in one of the most like difficult areas of the world to do astrophotography if that sounds like stuff that interests you feel free to consider going down below clicking on the subscribe button that little notification bell that will not ring sting when you click on it but so that you're notified when i put up a new video and regardless um you know feel free to go down below click on that like button if you like the video leave a comment down below if you have suggestions i already have a, a big list so i know what to do next uh, next month but i'll be taking that into account so we keep can keep going on this little video series that I want to do months per month on how to keep you occupied during that new moon. No, not the new moon, that full moon. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars or, you know, stay with your loved ones and I'll see you next time.